My first interest was Flippy Cat. I was really just transfixed by his stuff. As I got deeper into the community and started doing more, I was just like, wow, everything was kind of coming and leading to Hevish 5. What's up, Dominic community? I am very excited to be doing a podcast episode with the director of Lily Topples the World, Jeremy Workman. He's been filming me for the past three years and putting together such an incredible documentary. I'm so excited for y'all to see it. And we're just going to have a conversation about the film, uh, talk about it, uh, and get a little more behind the scenes perspective from the director's point of view. So without further ado, here is Jeremy. Hi. Hi. Hey, everyone. Thanks for uh, having me on. Is this my, my be- debut on your channel? I think it might be actually. You, wait, no, you're like in a photo in the trailer or in the like prior as South by Southwest trailer. Yeah. But um, I don't think you've actually been like talking or introduced in a video yet. I don't think I, I've been talking. I know I've been on your channel. And yeah. I know like there's been times when you'll be filming, you know, on Behind the Five or the community channel. And like I, there's a photo of me or something pops up related to the documentary. Yeah. And I remember when you were at college and there, there was some footage of me and I'm like, oh my God, I'm on Lily's channel. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because you like pop up in the behind the scenes, like in the background of like random clips. <laughs> and then it's just like, oh yeah, that's that's just Jeremy. Which is funny <laughs> because I think that kind of connects to like how we did the documentary in a yeah. way. Because like you were just living your life, doing your channel, doing your thing. And mm-hmm. like I was this kind of shadow figure, you know, yeah, yeah. usually often in the same room as you right. as you were just doing all this incredible stuff. And I was just kind of like off lurking in the corner with a camera. Mm-hmm. So I was this, I always felt like I was this like shadow presence in the, in the Hevish Five yeah. universe. You filmed so much Domino's, like how many hours of footage did you capture? I mean, so for the documentary, um, and the documentary is a full length, it's 90 minutes. And I, I think we shot, I mean, I shot alone somewhere between 500 and 600 hours. Wow. Yeah. So that, think about just, you know, you're, you're, you're subscribers think about how much that is it's so much footage and so i shot that plus you know part of the documentary was about you as as a creator so i also had access to your body of work and your whole you know everything that you filmed so that was also hundreds of hours so Mm -hmm. together we kind of took all that and weaved that into the movie It, it was a it was a lot it was a lot of footage um yeah, it was. I can't even believe it came out. It came yeah. out watchable. It could, you know, given how much it was. Amazing. Yeah, you've done such an incredible job, and I, I can't even imagine going through so much footage like that. Um, but in terms of like for the dominant community, like how did you even find the dominant community and decide to do a film about, uh, you know, not just me, but like this new art form? Yeah, I was really. I was really interested in it right from the get go. And uh, I think, you know, and, and your your subscribers will appreciate this. I my first interest was Flippy Cat. Um, I was really just just transfixed by his his stuff. Um, you know, how unusual it was, how innovative it was, how unique it was. And I think he was the first domino artist that I got really, really just became just a huge fan. And I think very soon after that, and I, I just consumed all all the Flippy Cat videos. Mm-hmm. Um, just again, as a as a fan, you know. And I know some of your your you know people that that follow this channel, they are Domino artists themselves, and some are just fans. And I was definitely the latter category. Um, what was cool was as I got deeper into the community and started doing more, I was just like, wow, everything was kind of coming and leading to Hevish 5. And I just, it was so interesting because I didn't really know who you, you were, you know, three years ago. A lot of people have asked us, like, how'd this documentary come out? I didn't know Lily, um, but I was just such a fan of her work that then we sort of, you know, I reached out to you out of the blue and that kind of started this kind of long process of us considering, hey, maybe there's a movie here that would be different from the way that you know people have seen you and your work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, and like 
to know that you're making the very first film about domino art. Like, how does that feel? It was awesome. You know, what was so interesting and, you know, of course, you know, you're sort of the the more front and center of the film and we really get into your story and your backstory and all that. But, uh, you know, as you've been mentioning, it became so much about seeing the world of domino artists and there was just so many people that we quickly were involved that got involved in the documentary that I filmed and you would be doing events and there's Shane O'Brien of Shane's yep. Dominoes and there's Nathan Heck of Mar Mar Dominoes. Mar Dominoes. Mar, yeah, that's right. Mar Dominoes. <laughs> yep. Sorry, Nathan. And, um, you know, Michael Fantazzi, stick trick domino dude. Yep. 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 And, um, all these other ones, of course, Steve Price, we filmed a lot with Sprice Machines. So it was just kind of like really cool to kind of get to be a part of that and see that universe. And uh, it was just really neat from that perspective as well. And everybody was mm-hmm. so cool. I yeah. mean, that was the other thing. Absolutely. Everyone's really nice. And yeah. Like, they really know their stuff and they really care about Domino's. Totally. And I remember just kind of being, you know, we would as as people will see when they see the movie, a lot of the movie is about just kind of, you know, kind of riding with Lily and seeing all this kind of incredible stuff that you're doing. And a lot of that involves a lot of other domino creators and domino artists. And um, I would often just show up and, you know, we'd be at a museum or we'd be at some kind of commercial event or television event and you had put together this kind of team where you would you know putting to do some of these very intricate you know pieces and that was awesome too so I really enjoyed that there's interviews with everybody and uh it's yeah. uh, it's it's a neat part of the movie yep and so much also just didn't make the cut too that was so interesting like you you went and interviewed bob specka like the original domino guy who like started the domino world record and you know all these other incredible builders like it, it it's really it's quite something i wish we could do like a part two documentary of like all the other stuff that you captured yeah it really was because you know when you make a documentary as you know a lot of people know you have to just film like a lot of footage and as you remember like i was just always filming you yeah know, for all, yep. all of you know all the subscribers out there you know at first lily was a little tentative you know here's jeremy again with a camera mm-hmm. by the third or fourth day it was just like oh okay. God, here we go again. It wasn't like, I it know. didn't take that long. Okay. I know, but it was like, yeah. I was just always yeah. around, always filming, always kind of right, right behind you. But I, I will say in the beginning, like, I wasn't used to being mic'd up, to be honest. Yeah. So that was like a little bit weird to get used to, knowing that like, oh, someone's like listening to all of my conversations right now. But yeah, um, it's weird, right? Yeah, it's a little weird. But after a while, you know, I, I got used to it and I actually feel like I forgot you were there, which was which is good. Um, that allowed me to be more authentic. And I think as the movie goes along, like you see in the film, like I you can kind of see me growing in it, like during the course of the three years um, and also just becoming more comfortable on camera, I feel like. Yeah, I think that there's a there's a lot that's really true about that, these ideas. One was that the three years that I filmed really coincided with like a lot of really cool stuff that was happening. So, yeah. you know, a, a, a lot of people know how you were in college and you decided to drop out and that there were the, all these, you know, exciting opportunities for you. And then of course it, it led eventually to you having h5 domino you know domino creations and that being like a thing now Mm -hmm. where you have uh, this product line so all this stuff was happening kind of you know serendipitously like by luck and we had no idea any of this would happen when we started filming like i was just a freshman in college and Jeremy found me at the right time in my life. Uh, Yeah, I mean, people will be amazed. Like, I literally, like, just showed up at Lily's dorm. I met all her friends. I'm hanging out with, you know, all your friends. And Mm -hmm. there's Tiffany. There's Lucy. And I'm just kind of, you know, Tay. And I'm just like, hey, guys, I'm filming Lily. Yeah. So and just getting back to your point about the whole thing being mic'd up, you know, just... Uh, um, again, people people know this. You guys are a lot of you are creators and filmmakers. But I would put a wireless mic on Lily um, sometimes as early as like you know eight in the morning, nine in the morning, and we would sometimes film all day. 
And that wireless mic would just be recording and recording and recording all day. And yeah, it's weird. It's, you know, I can imagine. I've never had been had to do had that do that. Yeah. I've only done that with subjects of movies I've done and it's weird. Maybe I should make a movie about you oh, and no, then you can be experience too boring. That. Boring, boring, boring. The movie boring. about the movie. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I would uh, so I would mic Lily up and I would just kind of could be around her and you know sometimes I'd be like running around filming you know another domino artist and um, uh, out of the corner of my ear or in the back of my ear I would hear you like having a really cool conversation about you know some creative thing about how you were going to put together something uh, you know in in a set um, and I would run race from where I was to then find you and and film that bit so you know, it became a little bit of a strategy of how how we did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so cool. So cool. Yeah, but you know, when you make a documentary, it's very different, you know, and I think one of the things that you, and I'm curious, I'll ask you when I'm done, you know, blabbing here, you know, I it's very different from how you make, make your content. Absolutely. You know? you know, when you make your content, it's so strategic and it's so focused on what you're doing and the shots you're getting are so focused. And with a documentary, you have to just really just film and film and film and you don't know what mm -hmm. you'd get. Yeah, and I like that approach you took because you weren't trying to like tell a specific story. You were really just capturing things as things happened. And through the editing process, you found these stories and narratives that could come out of it. Um, it wasn't like you were trying to push something or like try to prove a point. It was just like literally what happened. And I think that makes it feel really authentic. Yeah, how did you feel like, you know, just in terms like when you saw the process of a documentary filming you, of course, you had been interviewed, you know, we've seen interviews with you on, on your channel and elsewhere. But what what how is what were like revelations that you saw, you know, when here was now a documentary was being made on you? Ooh, what do you mean by revelation? Like things that you're like, oh, wow, this is this is being, you know, this is how you would do that. I didn't think this is how, you know, we did you, mm, you film this way or. Yeah, I think I was just surprised by the amount of footage you took, like everything, like even if it was mundane, like eating a sandwich with a friend like you would just film that yes. or like me going downstairs to do laundry <laughs> like just really random right things. I remember the low point of that was when you took out the trash remember yeah. when I filmed you taking out the yeah, trash yeah. and I'm like oh, I'll get this I'll film this um, <laughs> yeah for you know and again for all everybody who's like assuming this is going to be the world's most boring movie they've ever imagined um this is all never didn't make the movie. It's yep. cutting room floor. But I filmed Lily making eggs. I remember I filmed you doing the laundry. Did I film you brushing your teeth? I think you did. Yeah. Actually, yeah. That would be actually a really funny blooper reel or yeah, something. I feel like our subscribers would like that. They'd be like, what is going on? And yeah. then there was one moment where you take out the trash. And yeah. I remember thinking to myself, wow, I'm filming Lily taking out <laughs> the trash. Now, yep. it sounds insane. Like, why would, would you do that? But there's actually a little bit of like a method to the madness. And part of that is kind of, I think what you touched on a, a minute or two ago, which is like you get, it, part of my strategy is to make you get bored by the whole process of being in a documentary. Get that it's not, it's just, you know, you're used to it and it's just really casual and everything's casual. So that by filming so much of you, it really just lowers your guard. You're not thinking about performing for my camera. You're not thinking about, I need to do something for a documentary. It's just, you're in your natural space and mm -hmm. whatever happens, happens. And that was very much the approach. Yep. Yeah, I like that. And I like the the one person camera crew, really, like, or one or two, you know? Yeah. It was very low key. Yeah. So that that's another thing that's a little bit of, of a, an approach that I do, which, again, you know, your, some of the your viewers here might be curious, like, how do you how do you do a documentary? Do you have a big crew? Do you bring on people? Is it super complicated? And my answer to all this is no, it is simple, it is not complicated, and you just do it very informally and casually. And um, I think maybe that maybe that surprised you a little bit, that it was just me with a camera and mm -hmm. you with a mic, and there was no sound person, there was no extra crew, it was just yeah. me. Yeah, it was kind of even a joke, like, oh, are we even making a documentary? Like, what what is this? 
it's not even going to make the cut, right? You're going to you're going to cut out 95% of it anyway, right? Yeah, and and you know, that's another way that it's a little bit of like a strategy. How do you get good stuff? How do how do we get good stuff of Lily when, you know, she she is a um a, in some ways you're a public figure, in some ways you have you you have this YouTube channel, you put your life mm-hmm. on on the YouTube channel. Right. How do we find these moments of you that are different and really differentiate you to people who watch your channel and that they're going to see something new and different. And it was just sometimes me following you with a camera and just, it's just the two of us. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember a lot of really cool scenes of it, it that we have in the movie where you're in New York. And a lot of that is just me following you. You're in a museum. It's me. And you know, Mm -hmm. you're walking around, you're getting pizza and I'm just like, right, right. It's so is hanging out, yeah, you know, right in the back. And nobody really knows that we're making a documentary. It's not a big thing. You're not, you know, like on display. You're just doing your thing, and yeah. that's what I think made it feel really natural and yeah. authentic. Yeah, that that's really cool. And I love how in the film, it, it like it's not just about dominoes. It like as you've described it, it's sort of a coming of age story. And that's something that you didn't really see would happen as you were kind of putting it together, right? Right. And uh, I think that's something that'll be, you know, exciting for people to see it. Even Mm -hmm. people who know your work and and know, you know, love dominoes and are part of the domino community and love being a part of that. I think what's going to be striking is how this movie is also as Lily as you just said you know it's a coming of age movie meaning you're watching kind of you kind of come into your own in a little bit you yeah, know becoming an adult yeah. being independent um you just kind of finding y- your your voice finding yeah. your confidence i mean again i didn't i don't want to claim like i started when you were you know um uh, when you were not well, basically, I started filming and you already had a million and a half subscribers, you know, so it wasn't like I came in and you were just starting dominoes. But I think that there was this feeling with you where you were this freshman in college and you were sort of unsure about your next steps as both a artist, as a YouTuber, as a professional, and even as a, you know, a young woman, like you're where you're going to go in the world, where Mm -hmm. you're going to go in life. And I think that's, watching that over the course of making the movie, I think was really interesting. Yeah. And even now looking back, watching the documentary, I'm like, wow, was that how yeah. I'm like? Like I feel like I've still changed a bit and like have grown since. It's yeah, been filmed. I mean that's that's the that's what happens yeah. with subjects in documentaries. They watch and they're like, wait a second, this was two years ago, three years ago. But you have to remember that a documentary is about a snapshot in time, and we're watching, you know, we're watching this character over a course of three years. So mm-hmm. it, you know, for the story that we're telling, those that first year when you were in college is really relevant to this Mm -hmm. story and yeah you're really different now you know I know that now just running around with the movie and you and I are starting to do press on the movie you're super different than when I first met you when you were 19 you Mm -hmm. know but I think watching the movie you get to really experience that journey and that's really gratifying it's really neat for just being able to watch that and sort of I think people will really respond well to that. They're just going to see somebody that they could relate to. And, yeah. you know. And I hope that people can kind of just see, like, who I really am, you know. As, as you were just filming, like, it's literally just what happened, you know. I'm not trying to play to a camera necessarily. It's just you're there filming. And I think that's kind of different in a way, even from my own behind the five videos, because I'm very conscious of what I'm filming, even for those uh, types of videos, you know? Absolutely. You know, there was no like takes, there's no like, let's do it again. You know, you're not, you're not even often looking at my camera, you know, my mm-hmm. camera's observing. It's, you know, there's an expression that we use in documentary, fly on the wall. And that's kind of like what I was doing. You know, sometimes they were really, really amazing things. Like you would be doing something incredible that was going to be on television. And other times it was you in your office, you know, or in, mm-hmm. in your in your home, you know, working on your computer. And I was just a fly on the wall and whatever would happen would happen. And then it was my job to then edit it all and put it yep. together. 
all the jobs, yeah. everything, oh, man. directing, you know, filming, yeah. producing, what was, editing. What, what was fun, what I realized, um, I realized early on in the movie that I was like, okay, this is going to be this almost like like a travelogue or a ride-along. You know, mm-hmm. it was almost going to, like, I started to call it a ride-along. Like, what is this movie? I was like, well, it's this ride-along with, with you know, Hevish Five, and you're kind of following with her as she's doing all this interesting stuff. And sometimes it's really kind of exciting and sometimes it involves travel and sometimes it's work related and it's business related. And at the heart of it is always this awesome domino art that you're going to always see. That's whether it's Lily's stuff or the community, you're going to always see this incredible domino art. But mm-hmm. at the core of it, it was like this, almost like this ride along. Yeah. You're riding along with you. Yeah. And I love the the variation in the types of scenes that you film. Like it's not just like me doing big projects like on Fallon or something, but also you see me like in a school like doing a workshop or just like teaching kids how to build dominoes in like more low key settings like that. I remember I was talking to your father a lot who was so helpful and also helping get this movie together. Mm-hmm. Just so enormously great with just us figuring out, you know, how to get me access and whatnot. And I remember trying to explain this to him like, no, no, I'm interested in the quiet little things where Lily's talking to kids at VidCon or some somebody you know she teaches dominoes to uh, to an elementary school as much as I was interested in like oh my god she's going to be do- working with Jimmy Fallon so yeah that was very much an approach yeah that's great it's, yeah. it's not just showing like the more glamorous sides or not even like glamorous but like all of the sides of dominoes that it can reach people you know yeah I think I think the community you know the, the domino community they they you know the, the one of the reasons why they've embraced you so much and why people are, are have you, you found fans and and they're you know people are inspired by you is because of that it's not because oh look i'm on television it's because you're kind of you know you 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 represent someone that that I think is relevant and, and, and relatable to anyone. And that was something that was really important for us to capture mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, I'm glad you captured that. It's awesome. And thanks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you want to share or, um, or ask me? Or? Yeah, I mean, what's, you know, what's your favorite scene without giving away too much? What do you like? You're like, oh, my God, why is that? You know, <laughs> I hate that. I wish that wasn't yeah, in there. Yeah. Of course, I'm not going to cut it out necessarily, right. but, you know. I think, so my, I don't know, is this a spoiler or not? Maybe not. But, like, you guys know from the trailer and all, it, like, goes into the story of my adoption. And then at the end of the movie, it, like has like a culmination of like what I've done and how I've like grown and like changed as a person and I think you did a really great job in the editing showing you know where it was before and where things are now and it's just like ends in a very beautiful way and like you see people together and you, you see like what I've always been looking for it's like there you know and I think the first time I even watched the documentary, I, I definitely started tearing up watching the ending sequence and like the credits rolling. It's just, I love it. It's beautiful. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, that, um, you know, it, it, it is kind of interesting. I think you touched this at the beginning that it, um, I, I didn't want to exp- over explain in the mm-hmm. documentary. I didn't want people, you know, we've all, people have all seen documentaries. You've seen them on TV. You've seen them in school when you've had to sit in class on a rainy day and they play a documentary, you know, and there's usually people like explaining things in chairs. And yeah. and I tried to do as little of that as possible. I yeah, wanted- you, you don't need words when you can just show it. Exactly. So that was always a, an approach. Like, let's see this. Let's watch it. Let's let the audience sort of follow Lily's journey. Journey. Let's let them see this community come mm-hmm. together and they'll feel it, you know, as opposed to being told about it. And that's always something I'm trying to do is create a, a sense of feeling. So, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. You did an incredible job oh, with that. Yeah. It really it tells a story in a way that it lets the viewer kind of decide. And it I don't know how to describe it. It's like it's not like a typical documentary, right? It's not no. boring at all. And it, maybe I'm biased because it's like about my life. But like, it's a fun documentary. Yeah. And I think it's great for the family. It's great for kids, any age, like adults, 
you know, we've gotten lots of comments from people who are like even what, like 70 plus? All ages. Yeah. You know, that was something that's been so exciting to see since we've kind of started to premiere the film at film festivals. It's, you know, doing great and it gets all these like, it gets a lot of love. And yep. it gets a lot of love from a lot of different kinds of people. And yep. some people who have, l- many people, by the way, who are like, I had no idea about Domino's on YouTube. I just loved this. I loved this world. I love seeing this. And I think that was, that's been really cool, seeing just how people are just attracted to, to a, a human story. You know, it's it doesn't have to be about Domino's. It's just about a person that you kind of, start cheering for as it goes yeah it's been so cool to read the reviews like it's oh there's a lot of i can't even still process that this is happening that we have a a documentary yeah yeah yeah. and more and more people are gonna see it and you know i i I hope more i hope people discover it i hope people you know it finds new fans for domino artists and and domino the whole domino community i hope it finds like a lot of real you know new domino uh builders and just people who you know, even if they're not interested in dominoes, if the movie kind of helps them, inspires them to follow whatever weird, yeah. quirky thing they're it into. It doesn't even need to be dominoes, you know? As long as you're doing something that you enjoy and it, it really brings you happiness, then, like, just keep doing it, right? Yeah, and yeah. And I, I hope the film kind of conveys that message and shows, like, if you really believe in what you're doing, it's it's fine to keep doing it. It doesn't matter what other people think. I, I think it really does, and I think there's some great stuff that you say also that really sort of underscores that. It really, you know, kind of mm-hmm. puts a highlighter on those kind of things. And people who who watch it, who maybe have their own personal passions, you know, and are a little unsure about, you know, should they do this or should they do that, they might feel really inspired by the movie. Absolutely. And something that I've learned is like diving into a space where maybe not a lot of people are doing the same thing allows you to become an expert at it and like be the person who can teach other people or or show the world what this cool thing is. And that to me personally is super exciting to do something unique. It it kind of gives you an edge in a way. Yeah, totally. I mean there you know, it's it's following your your very personal passion and you know, I I was able as a filmmaker to really um, be inspired by the story on my own level and say like, yeah, you know, I'm interested in making documentaries that are on these really unique people and people that have different kinds of passion and that follow, you know, follow their dreams. And, and it, I sometimes need that inspiration too. And I was really, I really was able to feel in sync with your story as a way mm-hmm. for me to kind of be inspired for the movie making. That's awesome. Aww. That's really nice to hear because it's like, it's a cycle back and forth, you know? It is, it is. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jeremy. It's been so much fun talking about the film. Um, you can stream it now on Discovery Plus. The link is in the description. Go check out the film. Let me know what you thought. Yeah, of it. tell us. Tell us what you think. I guess what put put. You yeah, know. you can put in the comments. Sure. You can tweet us, uh, Jeremy. What's your social media? Where can people find people you? People could find me on Twitter, Jeremy Workman. Workman, just like it sounds. You could find me on Facebook. Maybe you could find maybe I don't know. You can find me. I'm not. I have Instagram. We have an Instagram um, for the movie. Lily topples the world, and which is a, not me, by the way. Right. It's not. It's um. That's just our Instagram for the movie. And there's also Twitter for the movie. Lily topples. So they could find find me that way. And um, yeah, I'm 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 out there. And every anyone should feel free to reach out. And if you're inspired or you want to hear more about making documentaries, feel free to reach out. I want to give a shout out to our featured community member, Jeremy. Really. Oh, am I a featured community member? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Congratulations, Jeremy. Oh, thank Jeremy. you. Oh, that's such an honor. Like, I, honestly, you've been part of this community. I love it. Even if people haven't seen you on the screen, like, you are part of this community. Oh, that's and awesome. I am so glad that you I, are here. I love reading, you know, the newsletter and keeping up with it. And I've had so many um, young Domino artists reach out to me since we made the movie. Oh, you really? Know? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. So, oh, that's such, such a thrill. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be an honorary member of the Domino community. Amazing. We're happy to have you. So thank you again, Jeremy. Anytime. As we do in our outros, we should say... 
I'll, I'll say I'm Lily Hevish. You say I'm Jeremy Workman. And then together we'll say and keep on building. I get to say and keep on building? Yeah, That's yeah, a dream. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, got to, I made the documentary just yes. so I could finally get to say and keep on building. Yes. This is your moment. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay. Are I'm you excited. ready? Yeah. All right. Wait, all right, all right. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. I'm Lily Hevish. I'm Jeremy Workman. And, and keep, keep on, on building. building. Woo! That was I was perfect. so excited I think our audio was messed up. <laughs>